Welcome to the Revelation Gospel Ministries. This is the first week in July, 2023. This makes Florida a little safer because now we can, we can most most of us can carry guns now legally, and so it's a safer place to be because the bad guys are now outnumbered. Uh, you know, we have had a couple of problems here. You, you notice that we're always outgunned, we're outmaneuvered. They, you know who they are, have more money, more organization, or influence. The Bible calls the left wiser than, than us. And they're all wiser than we are. Um, but we, it's the question, why is evil prospering so much? Why is evil winning? Mm -hmm. That we can't get a, a, a point across. They got us apologizing for being right. They got us whispering, you are a guy, not a woman. There's only two genders. Uh, they're punishing us. They're investigating us. They're uh, firing us from our jobs. We're outmaneuvered. But why does why does the pimp have the Cadillacs? Why do drug dealers got the big old million dollar gold chains on and they flaunting their money? Why is the song so always talking about prosperity and what we're going to do with ourselves? Jesus in the, it, it was predicted that he was going to destroy Satan in the garden with Eve. The punishment was God was going to destroy Satan. But it seems like Satan is winning. And when we see all this stuff going on, we have eyes to see it, ears to hear it. We see it. We recognize it. But I think we're being tricked in how to fight it, how to combat it. We're being tricked. We think that they don't understand. We think that when the when the homosexuals got to Washington to see the White House for pride in sin month, they exposed themselves and the, and the topless and the, and the president acknowledged them. And we try to explain to them the harm that they're doing. Explain to them how tough it is on kids to have them confused on their agenda. We try to explain to them as if they don't understand. But what if they understood? What if they know what they're doing? They're doing it on purpose. And what if they, they are calculating what to do? That's why whenever you debate with them and give a fact, they immediately change the subject. Well, what about this? What about that? They never comment on your factual statement because the facts are irrelevant to them. The truth is irrelevant to them. Jesus was tested in the wilderness. And, you know, he was led into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit guarded him, protected him, and, and the angels were around him, but they still, he was sent to Satan. He was presented to Satan to tempt. After he fasted 40 days, as soon as he got baptized, God sent him to the wilderness. And he had to fast for 40 days, be weak and hungry and desperate as a, a human. And then Satan was allowed to come to him to tempt him, to test him, to give him some kind of reason to go against God. And in Luke 4, I, Luke 4 you know, I like Luke's version better than I do Matthew. Because in Luke, Luke quotes something that Matthew doesn't quote when he talks about what Satan tried to do with Jesus. Uh, in Luke 4, he said, and in, in verse 5, And the devil, taking him up to a high mountain, showed to him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time, in an instant of time, like your life passing before you. Anybody ever had that life passing before you? I did. It was... Interesting. When that when that two thousand eight hundred pounds of steel fell on me, before the sound on the way of the collision, before the sound on the way, my entire life in vivid color passed. With my entire life, you know, it's like I was in a movie theater. I didn't see nothing else around me. It was a and it, it went before the sound on the way. My entire life was reviewed, and it was it was interesting. It was, uh, another guy turned with me. He just told me his girlfriend was pregnant. And I'm laying there dying. I'm thinking, I don't have any kids. I regret not having any kids. Your life in review passed before me. And it was, it was a good review. It wasn't a bad review. But the fact that in, in an instant of time, in a moment of time, Jesus looked at all the wealth of the world, all the cane of the world. And, and the devil said to him, all this power I will give thee and the glory of them for that is delivered to me, and to whoever I will, I give it. He's saying he had all the money, all the power, all the influence on this planet, and Jesus did not call him a liar. He's just saying, that's not true. He has the ability to do the same thing to us. He will give you, if you give him honor and glory and worship, he will make you wealthy. You look at Beyonce, all that, all that satanic signs and her music and all that. Her and her husband worship this false kind of belief system. Hollywood, Wall Street, business. You see them, you see them actively seeking the attendance of Satan. 
and what they're doing. And we're sitting here in our little churches and we're complaining about what they are doing. Satan has the power over this world. He, he, he won that in the Garden of Eden. He won control of the earth. That's why Satan, that's why God had to put man out of the garden. So Satan is running this thing now. He's the God of the air, he's the God of the earth. This was his domain. We're here to take him out of his home. We're going to evict him. That's why he doesn't like us. You go home today and find somebody in your house say, I'm on this place now, you're going to have a reaction. <laughs> it's going to be on front page news. <laughs> and that's what Satan is doing. This is his place. And it appears to me, this is my, I always say, this is, this is the first book of Grandpa. It seemed like Satan had an evil thought. He was the great song leader. He was important. He was beautiful. He was influential. And he said, yeah, I, I can do this God thing better than God. I'm going to do this God thing better than God. I'm going to, I'm going to rebel. He's very persuasive. He persuaded a third of the angels in heaven to go against him to fight God Almighty. Satan knew God. Satan was aware of God's power. Satan still thought he can overthrow God Almighty. And he still thinks that. He's been cast back down. He's been punished. He, God promised him, I'm going to do this for you. And the reason God put so much prophecies in the Bible is to point out to us that God's in charge. Because if Satan gets one prophecy not to come true, God's a liar. And God cannot lie. So Satan thinks, if I can make any promise of God to you and to your family and to your country not come true, then God cannot be God and Satan wins. That's Satan's idea. That's why the Bible is the only book of prophecies. It's the only book that God has laid down in detail history beforehand. He called it his story. And God has laid out saying, make me alive. Just like Job. Satan went to Job. First went to, he went to God and said, let me test Job. He got to go test Job. Same thing here. He tested Jesus. He, Jesus was weeping. Jesus was, was weak. Job was weak. And he said, test my servant Job. Jesus turned to Satan and said, if, if, <laughs> he's asking, if you, if you therefore worship me, all this is yours. This is what Satan said to Jesus. And what, what he meant by that was submission, complete surrender. He wanted him to, to adore him. Satan wanted Jesus to adore him, to worship him, to surrender to him. And I give you all this. I give you the earth. I don't understand how he can be that stupid. I mean, Jesus built the earth. He created, he created, he's the word of God. So when God said, let there be, it was Jesus doing it. So how can you come in and say, this is, you're going to take, you're going to give me this. I already made this. And Jesus just said, you know, you're going behind me, go about your business, but he didn't call him a liar. And that's why you see in this world here, how powerful they are. They're everywhere. They outnumber us, they outmaneuver us. They're planning already for the election. They're planning for our reaction to the election. So in verse 8, Jesus answered and said, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord your God, and him only shall thou serve. Him only. Not your car, not your job, not your grandkids, not, not your position in life, not the glory that you get from mankind. Uh, God Almighty, everything you do, if you do that, you're protected. And if you don't do that, you're not protected. You ever notice? The music industries, the athletes, the corporations, the actors, the universities, most successful business in the world honoring Satan with their awards and rewards and condemnation. Christianity is crazy. 60% of Americans think that America is a bad place because we had 50 years of public schools telling all our kids America is a bad place. And we don't tell our kids at home. It's all oh, teachers wrong. No, teachers evil. And we still elect the same school board. Man's running for school board. We still elect the same leaders. There's no punishment because Christians are told not to get involved in politics. Separation of church and state. How can you separate God from anything? There is nobody man enough to separate God from nothing. We still entertain the concept. The church sold their soul when they accepted that 501 c tax exempt status and allowed it, now folks to get a tax write off for giving you money. So you will now criticize the government as you going against the guy who's feeding you now. So churches are, 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 are neutered. They don't have no power. We saw a corporate kid. Churches said, okay. The government told the church, you are not essential. You are not essential. 
but the liquor store is essential. The whorehouse is essential. And we said, nobody protested. We said, okay, we was in Missouri. I'm waiting to find a church willing to go to jail. That's where I was going to join. Couldn't find nobody. Nobody, nobody protested. And then they said to the church, well, you can have service now, but only 50 people, no matter how big your auditorium is, 50 people can get into a church. You got to be five feet, eight, six feet apart. And we said, okay, all right, let us know we can go to church, church again. And then they said, you can't sing, or singing puts your breath out there. You can't sing. You can't hug. You can't praise God. And the church said, okay, are you kidding me? We don't know why we're so bad. I remember a case in California, I've, I've talked about this before, in California where the biggest black church in LA, first AME, the initials is fame, and it's on their, on their, on the, on the door you walk in. And not first African Methodist Episcopal, it's fame. That's what they want. And in matter of fact, in the phone book in LA, they weren't listed as a church. They were listed under a uh, civil rights organization. Hmm. The biggest black church in the front row, Magic Johnson and all the, all the movie stars in the front row together. See? And they decided on one Sunday to have AIDS Sunday, where this pastor led nine other large black churches in LA pass out condoms to sixth graders with lubrication and instructions during church service. And the congregation said, Amen, because the pastor is the leader. They took the pastor as the leader. Now, normally you'd think that maybe there was some debate. People say, that's not, that's not a good idea, Pastor. You know, maybe there's a little debate going on. And in most black churches, before church service starts, all the leaders meet in the pastor's office, they have prayer for them to go out and, and hustle the people, I mean, to preach to the people. And that was probably what was happening. Before the 8 o'clock service, they're in that back room with the pastors, and around them were boxes of condoms. They're going to hand out to the people. And in that, in that prayer, the power went off, and the church went black. The church went dark, and they got the power back on again. And I've never read in the Bible where that is a, a good sign. <laughs> I looked. I can't. I can't see where darkness is a good sign. But that pastor got there in the pulpit, Pastor Cecil Murray. He got in the pulpit and said, it "Always goes dark when a woman has an unplanned pregnancy. It always goes dark when when a, when a child is being born to a poor family." Always goes dark when somebody has been raped and got, got pregnant. Always goes dark. That was a good sign from God. It's good. We're going to stop the darkness. And they passed out. My question, not what the church did. My question wasn't what the, the deacon did. My church wasn't even about the, the, um, the ushers who passed down the collection plate full of condoms down the aisles and mother and father sitting there with the kid. You're supposed to take a package out to give your six-year-old, your sixth grader, and pass it down. That's my problem. Those, those parents in that church, um, how can you do that? So me, being me, I called the pastor when I heard about it. First, a good friend of mine had a radio program, and, and she tried to get him on a show, and, and, and they jumped all over her. Now, she, this is a fighter, but they jumped all over her. So I, I called the pastor, and I got the sister pastor on the phone. I said, I'm going to talk about this condom distribution you guys put out. Oh, that didn't happen. That was never happening. And she said something, the world loves Pastor Murray. The world loves the pastor. Now, if the world loves me, we in trouble. If the world loves, if I'm doing something the world loves, I'm doing something wrong. She was bragging. The world loves him. He never did that until I faxed her the front page of LA Times where it was him in the pulpit and Age Sunday was across the headlines. And I passed with that, and so all of a sudden he gets he gets on the phone and said, "Well, yeah, Mason, I I don't I don't know what what's going on down there in San Diego, but up here they're dying of AIDS. We're just trying to keep them from dying of AIDS." I said, "Pastor, you mean to tell me you 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 found a way to to sin safely? <laughs> you you found a a safe way to sin?" And he told me to go to hell. This pastor told me to go to hell, and I hung up the phone on me. So I called back and said, we must have got disconnected because I know the pastor did not invite me to his home. <laughs> he gets back on the phone again and tells me that if you go on the air and tell the folks I did this, I'm going to sue you and take your home from you. I said, Saturday morning, 11 o'clock, K-Praise Radio. And we start the show and I 
told the audience, we're gonna take a commercial break for the lawyers listening. So, cause apparently I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be um, taped and they're gonna sue me for telling you the truth. I wanna take a break. We didn't get the recording devices all set up and everything and, and all the audience ready and we're gonna, so we got back on the air again. I said, listen, this, this pastor is sending your kids to hell in front of you. He is delivering to them condom. You, you give a 14 year old kid a condom. He said, that's permission. My teacher gave me these condoms. My pastor gave me, and he got the little girl. She said, no, baby, no, baby. He said, my the pastor said, it's okay. The pastor said, this is mature. This is grown up stuff. That's the encouraging it. And I said, he's going to take my home from me. So I'm going to first tell you where my home is in case he ain't find my home. Uh, my home is being built by a Jewish carpenter. But these can't break in. <laughs> so, so if you get my, go get my house. But meanwhile, back in the ranch. Now, I went back five years later after this event happened, and I looked at all these nine black churches, and every one of those pastors have been promoted in their denomination. Every one has been promoted. That's the problem. The word of God is not going out now. The word of God is the same of the gospel. The word of God is the same of the, of the pelicans and the Pharisees and, and the pharaohs. We're more afraid of that. That's how Jesus got into trouble. The people around him, the leaders, the religious leaders around him knew that was the Christ. They had to have known. They've been preaching it, teaching it, studying all their lives. They knew the signs. They knew what's going to happen. And he said, they said, are you the, are you the king? Are, are, you the, are you the savior? He said, answer your own question. Is a deaf hearing? Is the blind seeing? Is the dead been raised from the grave? That's the only sign. There's nobody going to do that but me. And they, they knew who he was. But their position in life, these, these politicians out here, folks, these business leaders got to where they are the way things are. They got their power the way things are. They do not want things to change. So if we, could, if we have a, a revival in this country, it's going to change how they make their money. They're going to come against you. That's what the Bible says. They're going to come against you. They're going to hate you. They're going to, be, they're going to deceive you. They're going to lie to you. Uh, so Satan is the leader. It's, this is not man doing this. That's why I don't talk to these fools. I want to make this guy with me on the radio in uh, Minnesota. He want a regular show with me to come on the air we can throw bricks at me that's what you know, i throw bricks back so it's it's a, i mean yeah mason they, they, they're not gonna like you i, I got friends what what am i what what is that i'm gonna be afraid of i'm gonna be afraid of i'm gonna be ashamed of god or ashamed of you getting upset with me he didn't put me he did not put me in the air i was, I was gonna do a regular show with him i'd be glad to i'd be glad to give an account of the gospel i'm not talking to these people about their foolish activities i'm not trying to debate what they're doing is right or wrong. I'm saying God cannot bless this country if you keep doing this. Because if we are blessed by God, we're going to give credit to Satan. They just had that event in Boston, the biggest satanic event ever in Boston. Now, now, now giving credit, the Boston city officials didn't want them there. They tried to stop them. Because even they begin to wake up. The real wokeness. <laughs> they begin to wake up. We going to do what? When they got satanic signs. You see the... The, the parade in your face now. They go to your school naked, men in front of your kids. And we debate with the school board. We debate with the school board. That's like debating with a wolf over the sheep. Instead, we need to be punishing them. We need, they need to be, matter of fact, schools should not be government control. Should be no government schools. Uh, it's not in the Constitution, it's not required. So you have Satan showed Jesus all the wealth of the world. He promised to give it to Jesus if he would bow down and worship him. Satan is not, was not called a liar. Anybody know Disney World? You think they care about boycott? You think they care that the, the governor took away their little power base here? Disney owns most of the media. Uh, Disney owns Fox News. Well, not Fox News, they own Fox. Fox News kept the Fox News control. Um, but Disney owns Pixar, Lucasfilms, ESPN. <laughs> they, own, they own major corporations. I mean, 50%, 80%. Uh, if you own 50% of a company, you own, you own that company. You own that company. They own, they own dozens of major companies around this globe. Dozens. Not just the Disney label, not the Disney Cruises or that stuff. They own major companies. How, uh, History Channel, Lifetime. They own it all. <laughs> That's how you notice that the History Channel does so much on Nazism. They glorify Hitler. See that? 
they glorify it. The Nazis, the Nazis, what they're doing, they're, the philosophy, they're trying to make it an even tone. So, the world, he is, he's, he's the usurper of the world. He is the great liar. He's jealous of us. We'd be very careful not to give him power, not to give him authority. You don't argue with Satan. It's like Patton arguing with the SS troops or debating with the SS troops. <coughs> That's not what we're doing. Our job, the Bible says that it's going to be like it was in the days of a lot, in the days of Noah. I've been really studying this. The days of a lot and the days of Noah. The Noah spent a lot of time trying to convince them to stop doing what they were doing. See, the judgment had already been done. You're going to have a flood. God said it. That means floods coming. And those who are going to be saved have already been laid out. You and your kids. So why would Lot spend a lot of time? Why would Noah spend a lot of time trying to convince these fools to stop being sinful? He didn't. He got himself ready to go home. This is our time, folks. It's time for us to get ready to go home. It's time for us to start packing up and showing up and proclaiming. Our job is, is to be disciplined enough to tell them about the truth, but not spend a lot of time convincing them. The Bible says that if, you know, uh, you don't argue with a fool. It also says you argue with a fool. It's, it's kind of strange in, in, in Psalms. You don't argue with the fools in, in Proverbs. And then it says, argue with a fool. And it makes me look foolish. I don't spend a lot of time trying to deal with them. Um, in John 1, in John 8, 4, for us, you are of your father's the devil. And the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. And abode not in the truth. He doesn't know the truth. Say does not know the truth. I mean, because there is no truth in him. That's why he doesn't <clears throat> even know the truth. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own, for he is a liar and a father of it. Why are we debating? These people know what they're doing. They know who Satan is and know who God is. They hate God. Now, I, I, my first sermon in this church, the first sermon we talked about when the children of Israel came through the wilderness, 40, I mean, they were not lost. They were just being led through the wilderness. They were being led by a power, tower, a fire, a pillar of smoke. And because they're sin, God was leading them through the wilderness until they all died. Everybody came out of Egypt had to die first. And so they finally crossed that Jordan. He got folks, Rahab said, they know what happened at the Red Sea. That was 40 years earlier. 40 years earlier, they knew what happened. They saw what happened to the two kings that came against you. That means for 40, and then they saw their local river split. I said before, the Peace River split, and a million folks walked into Charlotte County. You would know about it. It'd be, it'd be okay. To, if your neighbor to talk, you would know. Four, and a million folks came into the Promised Land, and the way I've said, their hearts waxed cold. When they heard you were coming, they'd seen what God had done for you. They'd seen the pillar of fire, the tower of smoke, the, the matter from the sky step on, on, on the Sabbath. They've seen that everybody come against you was destroyed. They saw the water come from the rock, the Bible says, not a rock, the rock. I think they took that rock with them. I think so, the, the rock, the water. For a million people, it's a lot of water in the desert. And they said that their heart waxed cold because, she said, because they know. They know you serve the true and living God. They know that's God behind you. They know it. They've seen God give them victory for 40 years. They all knew it. So tell me, folks, knowing all that, why did they stand on the walls of Jericho against God? They had seen what God has done. This is, we think that, that evidence is going to be self-explanatory. We think that these fools see it now enough. They're going to change their ways. They, they knew there was God Almighty. The Pharisees knew there was Jesus. They knew. They found the high priest, um, his tomb, and I, who, who condemned Jesus to, to be crucified. Now this guy turned against Jesus, but his his tomb was decorated with Christian symbolism. They said, it can't be him. It must be his sons. It can't be him because he crucified Jesus. He wasn't a Christian. Folks, when Jesus rose up, he spent 40 days walking around them people. And there's no record that he ever spoke to an unsaved person after he rose up that grave. He was done with them. That was our job now. You take in the fools. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and they spit on me and they beat me. And now I'll take them and I come back. You take, so our job was to go to the unsaved, but 
around Jerusalem, thousands of people came out the graves with Jesus. You realize that? So in, in, in Abraham's bosom, the part of hell reserved for those who believe it was coming, they were comfortable and waiting for him to come. And when Jesus came, he led them, he led captive free. He kept, he brought them out of the grave. And the Bible says that the graves around Jerusalem opened up and the dead came out. And they were with Jesus those 40 days that he was there on earth before he went up. And the host was with him. Where the host came from, these were the people that came out. So now you got Aunt Mary and Uncle Joe and Aunt, Aunt Grandma walking around saying, yeah, man, you know, he came, buddy. He came. That's why there's such a big revival in Jerusalem. When 4,000, 5,000 came to Christ at one time, they saw it. Why wouldn't this high priest who condemned him to die be converted by that? Well, he said, oh, okay, I messed up. Even the Roman soldiers said, this is truly. They didn't say could be. They didn't say maybe. This is truly the Son of God after they killed him. Mankind could look God in the face and still disobey God. Ask Eve. Ask Adam. You know who God was. So what are we doing now? About Satan, he said, um, therefore, this is 2 Corinthians 4, 4. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Verse 3, but if our gospel be hid, we are afraid to speak. We're ashamed of our daddy don't get mad at us. We, 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 we may get fair from our boss for saying things. If we are afraid to speak, get this fool here. If our gospel be hidden, it, it is hid to them that are lost. The gospel is hidden to those that are lost. Right? The people in Jericho couldn't see it. They couldn't see it. They were blind. You got Lot was blind. They were blind around him. They were, they, so the world is blind to us. They see us here. They see what we're doing, and they're blind to us. You know, God of this world, the Satan, has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Satan hides the presence of God from the ungodly because he doesn't want God to influence them. But they have a choice. He doesn't capture them. Understand, Satan did not trick Eve in taking the garden, take, taking the fruit. He didn't persuade her. He didn't trick her. He didn't, he didn't deceive her. He told her about it. And then the Bible says when Eve saw, when Eve saw the tree was good. I think it was like a red tag seller at Macy's. You know, she was shopping 50% off. <laughs> and, she, and she couldn't help it. It was on sale. If I don't take it, somebody's going to get it be purer than me. So she, she took it because she wanted it. But she gave it to her husband, who was also with her, also knew God, also worked with God. God gave him instructions. Protect this place I gave you. Protect this garden I got you in. Protect it. And, and you know, that beautiful creature God made for his own goodness. Here, husband. Okay. And he tried to blame Eve. God, that woman, the woman you gave me, uh, you and I together, hang out together. It was perfect. It was, it was paradise. And you brought, I had asked for this woman. You brought this woman to me now. He, she gave it to me and I ate it. Like, it's Eve's fault. He left us to lay it on Eve. Coward. And God punished the earth for Adam's sake. It's really strange to look at that punishment. It's really strange when, when God looked at Adam, he said to him, because you hearken to the voice of your wife. Comma. That was the first reason. Because you did her will and not my will. And ate from the tree. Like the secondary thought. And, and that. Yeah, that, that too. Curse is the earth. Man wasn't cursed. We're not cursed. Curse is the earth for your sake. And all day you're going to work. All day you're going to pillage. You're going to fight the earth to eat and to sleep and to build. You're gonna, and we've been fighting the earth. That's why, that's why women don't mind working and men do. Because... To the woman, work is not work. To us, it's punishment. <laughs> we men punish. We don't. Women's punishment is childbirth and, what's the big word again? Submission. <laughs> because it's part of your punishment. No one wants to be punished. Nobody. You know, women don't be, you know, you know there, there's no submission problem at work. On the bus, they submit to authority, but you get home, boy, I don't know. You know, in the church. I'm trying to get somebody to preach here. 
They don't want to submit to me to preach. There's <laughs> <laughs> no names over here, but in the case, we are called out of it. John 5, 19 says, And we know that we are of God, and that the whole world lieth in wickedness. This is why we see evil everywhere. The last days, you're going to see evil everywhere. So our job now, we see this. Everywhere we look, we see insanity. If you're over 50 years old, you can't imagine what this was. We couldn't have not imagined. Nobody could have told us this in, in, in school. This is going to be happening, we see right now. Because the world is evil, and we see it everywhere. Our job is to recognize it. And the Bible says that when you see these things, instead of getting worried and feisty and depressed and upset, when you see these things happen, know your redemption draws near. Celebrate that God's word is coming to pass. And in the end, we're going to win. It's going to look like we're losing. Darkness is here. They hate you. They're going to come against you. We're going to be murdered. We're going to be killed because of the gospel. They killed Jesus. They're going to have mercy on you. That's okay because we will not die. We're going to be with God forever and Jesus forever. And God's will will be done on this earth. And they are trying their best to go to hell. They're trying their best. They're openly worshiping Satan, folks. We have in the church homosexual pastors. We have atheists pastors in our church now. Atheists, openly atheist pastors being voted in by the congregation because they give good speeches. That's what, we, blindness, we're blind. The church has lost its favor, it's lost its salt, the church is ineffective now, the church is more worried about that communion plate than was preaching the pulpit. And because it, it's a show, you see them, it's, it's first, it's entertainment now. But the people of God is not in the church, it's in the hearts of man. Our job is to make sure that the whole world see what we're doing. So when we see this, this is a political sermon. My sermons are always political. That's what the problem is. People can ask me, why do I speak about politics in church? Every problem facing God's people in the Bible, every problem came from the government. Every single one of them came from the government. Jesus Christ was born in Bethlehem because they had to go pay their taxes. That every problem and every problem facing us today comes from government. We had discussions here before church service. Every problem we talked about was government. 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 Either they feed it, or they regulate it, or they control it. So our problem is always Baal. It is the natural enemy of God. I'm not going to let Baal usurp what I'm saying or doing. It's time for us to stand up for God and God stand up for us. We're going to win this. It's already been declared winning. The Bible is full of prophecies declaring we're going to win. It is over. The world sees it. They're desperate. They want as many folks with them in hell as possible. Let's not go to hell. Let's continue to praise God and serve him with all we're doing. Let's pray. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father, for the clarity of your word. We thank you for the ability to see and understand what's going on in this world. Give us strength to confront, strength to direct, strength to correct, to guide people back to your mercy and your grace. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for the power you've given us. Amen. Amen. And that, folks, almost. Amen.